greatest cargo ship. Four football fields long. A monster diesel engine. The longest engine shaft. 300,000 pieces of steel that must fit exactly. It's a 700 ton, so when it moved, it moved. They set the bar high in Denmark. Okay, now we're ready to go. But make one mistake with million dollar parts like this, and it's game over. No one wants to throw the big ship behind schedule. We go hot, hot, three, two, one, now. But anything can happen, building the world's biggest container ship. Okay, baby, get back! cargo ships, destined to carry a payload of more than 11,000 containers. That's a lot of goods, enough to fill a freight train 70 kilometers long. Compared to yesterday's container ships, it's David versus Goliath. But this monster ship isn't being built in the mighty shipyards of Asia. It's taking shape in the biggest little shipyard around. You'll find it in the small city of Odense, in tiny Denmark. Home of blue cheese, beer, and Danes who trace shipbuilders and their family trees back to Viking times. So how do they build the world's biggest container ship in the little shipyard that could? With 3,000 hard-working Danish shipbuilders, like Soren Jensen. Soren's just 32. Everything is okay, yeah. He started as a laborer when he was 17 and worked his way up. Now he's the foreman responsible for fitting big, expensive pieces to the ship, like this monster propeller. Soren has to be on his toes every day. One mistake, and he could throw off the ship's entire schedule. This is the biggest dry dock here, and the big ship gets just 45 days in it. Any delay getting out of the dry dock backs off the next ship waiting to get into it. And today, Soren's delayed. He can't start installing the engine until he solves this problem. Bad welds. There it is, huh? There it is. Don't have a skin crown. Hand for Akta Kanten. Ain't no, they do a slice. I had three small starter stuff for slicing and ABS can. Well, look at Two inspectors dog Soren's every footstep. Thank you. Can I borrow your pen? He needs their sign off on everything he does. Thank you. Everything is okay, so we can uh, start installation of the main engine this afternoon. The world's biggest container ship has no name yet. It's just Ship 210. It's one of eight identical ships being built for the Maersk Line, the globe straddling ship and giant. For months. 
months, the shipyard cut thick steel plate into hundreds of thousands of smaller pieces. Then it welded them together into big assemblies called blocks. It will take 150 of these giant pieces to assemble the big ship. It's being built in classic Danish style, like Lego, one big building block at a time. But these blocks are no toys. It's 6 a.m. A massive block, a bulkhead, is being lifted into the ship. It's wider than a football field and as tall as an apartment building. It weighs 467 tons. That's heavier than two jumbo passenger jets. It takes one of the world's biggest cranes to lift a piece like this. They're in a class of their own. They're called Goliath cranes. But now, with just meters to go, the Goliath comes to a dead stop. A bracket is in the way and has to be burned off. Three hours after they start, mission accomplished. Now it's young Soren Jensen's turn. He has just one week to install the world's biggest diesel engine. It's a beast. It's 114,000 horsepower strong. It towers five decks. It's longer than a tennis court. The engine is so big, it doesn't go out the front door. The shed goes. Soren has people hanging over his shoulder again. <laughs> These Korean engineers built the engine. Okay. Are we ready? They want to make sure the young Danish foreman assembles it to their specs. Now the first piece of the big engine is on its way. It's called a bed plate. The rest of the engine will be built on top of it. One hundred and five meters above, the crane operator adjusts his load seven meters to the left, to the right, down. The Koreans keep a close watch on the engine and on Sora. Then the next bed plate. The second part of the engine's foundation is lowered with a massive Goliath crane. By day's end, the first level of the world's biggest diesel engine is complete. The next day, Soren runs into trouble. If he doesn't fix this problem with the engine, vibrations could set in at sea and destroy it. The two big bed plates Soren's crew installed yesterday are out of alignment less than one millimeter but here that's a country mile the allowable error is nil nothing at all it's uh, too much is because we need to have uh, nothing and here is a point oh five millimeters so we need to have it totally uh, together so i will go down and talk with axel about it down below Soren's man Axel is struggling to lift the bed plates ever so little by adjusting these foundation bolts. You are a little bit hard, right? Yeah. 
Lifting 370 tons, a fraction of a millimeter, is no easy feat. Soren has a weighty problem. Yeah, a little. We like to have it a little smaller here. Yeah. So we will uh, lift a little more. Yeah, a little more. Yeah. So he heads below again for another look. Yeah, they got it. Yeah. Yes. stuck. The Koreans won't sign off until he gets it right. And until he does, his crew is stopped dead in its tracks. biggest diesel engine are still less than a whopping one millimeter out of alignment. That's as thick as a few sheets of aluminum foil, but a monumental problem for Soren Yetsen. Until he shows the Koreans who built the engine that he's fixed the problem, he can't move on. The misalignment could destroy the engine. Soren has a plan. He'll correct the alignment of the bed plates, but only so far. He's calculating from past experience that when it's lowered, the next big engine part will flatten the bed plates perfectly. Soren sells the idea to the Koreans. No one knows if it'll work. The next engine part won't be lowered for days. to the next step, dry ice. It's frozen carbon dioxide gas, and it's cold enough, minus 78 degrees Celsius, to peel the flesh off unprotected fingers. Dry ice is the key ingredient for a metal fitting technique called shrink fitting. Freezing these bolts shrinks them, so they slide in easily, then expand quickly when they hit warmer metal. That guarantees a very tight fit. Soren will use frozen bolts to attach this gear to the crankshaft of the main engine. They have only seconds to fit the frozen bolts in, so the pass from one set of arms to the next must be exact. And it is. are the workhorses of the little shipyard that could. But without the Goliath crane, the big ship just doesn't get built. When it's working, the dry dock runs like clockwork. Keeping the big crane busy is this man's job. Christian Dirksen, project planner. He's worked here 31 years. He sets the shipyard schedule, but he can't control the weather. And it's making a shambles of his plans for the Goliath crane. We have come into the windy periods. Some years when it doesn't blow so much, we have no problems, but it has been quite windy the last months. 
stiff wind overnight delayed a barge from a Baltic shipyard. It makes smaller blocks like this that are then welded here into the big blocks. Now it won't be ready for the Goliath crane. And if the giant crane is idled, it's a huge setback. You can ask for good weather, but we cannot be sure we'll get it. So therefore we must have alternative plans, alternative ways to build up the ship. Soren is the answer. Christian moves Soren's next lift, another big piece of the engine, forward. Six a.m. the next morning. Soren will position the single biggest piece of the engine today. It weighs four hundred tons and will sit on top of those frustrating bed plates. Soren still doesn't know if his plan to fix that gap of less than one millimeter will work. You can never really tell until you try it. He doesn't show it much, but even Soren is impressed at times with the scale of things here. Ham for helvete, det er det vi kan lige sige. Og vi venter bare til vi kommer længere ned, så må vi kunne tage det. Ja. Now, the critical part, lining up this monster piece of engine with the bed plates below. The gear in the big piece above must mesh exactly with the main gear. They look good. Now it feels good, but we still have all the weight in the crane, so we have not uh, landed the part yet, so it will take a few minutes before we can land it. If the bed plates aren't aligned, Soren will have to adjust them again. And no one wants that. But success. 400 tons of engine has pressed the bed plates into perfect alignment. Soren's plan worked. Now, the big crane starts working 24-7 to keep the world's biggest container ship on schedule. It will lift two of the biggest building blocks today. But things go wrong quickly. That's the sound of a runaway load knocking over everything in its path. Now this giant block is a pendulum that can't be stopped. 705 tons of swinging steel at the Odense Steel Shipyard. just started lifting this block for the world's biggest container ship. Then, things went sideways. Now, it's 705 tons of steel swinging out of control from the Odense shipyard. When it moved, it moved. <laughs> we, we, we can't stop it so quickly. So how did it happen? Up above, the crane driver miscalculated his position. When he lifted the load, it started swinging to find its center of gravity. UV Anderson, a crane man himself, is an oasis of calm. But you never forget your first big lift. Uh, it was uh, quite an experience. Uh, a little nervous at the first time. But that's is 17 years ago now. <laughs> now the crane's on hold. The big load just has to stop on its own. This man knows ships inside out. Jörn Sorensen, Marine Engineer. 
He'll run the Sea Trials, a five-day shakedown cruise to test the world's biggest container ship to its limits. Standing inside an engine, monster crankshaft overhead, is old hat for Europe. He's just at home checking out the bow thrusters that push the ship sideways. There's so much to get right, but so much that can go wrong. Like this steel plate that urine's found inside this fuel tank. Oh, they'll be like full out of Still on this position. The pounding of the sea could stress even crack welds holding these uneven pieces together. As we can see, we found uh, some kind of misalignment up to about 10 millimeters. And that is not acceptable. Not acceptable inside a fuel tank. There will be fuel oil inside here. And if you have some cracks, there will be fuel oil in the cargo hose. Because just beside we have the cargo hose. Urine's fix? Cut a 10 millimeter strip from the bottom of this steel plate and re-weld it. We cut this, move it down, and then I think the alignment will stay okay there. Meanwhile, the world's biggest diesel engine is growing again. This is the second last piece, the cylinder deck. Placing these big engine parts takes coordination. The crane operator has two spotters guiding in his 300-ton load. He works blind. With a couple of meters to go, there's little room for error. The crane stops so the Korean techs can lay down beads that will compress into a gasket when the engine piece above is lowered. The radio chatter is all about air and centimeters. The foreman wants to know how much air, how much space is left. Now they're just millimeters from contact. With a centimeter to go, the foreman wants to bang in a fitter bolt to hold the engine piece in place and see if the alignment is true. Ship 210 is one step closer to hitting open water. Its sea trials are only three months away. But now, Soren Jensen faces his most difficult task, lifting the propeller. If it goes wrong, it could throw the big ship behind schedule. And Soren knows it. It's two and a half weeks later, and the world's largest container ship is rapidly taking shape at the Odense Steel Shipyard in Denmark. Now, young Soren.
Warren Jensen faces his toughest assignment. If this propeller lift goes wrong, he could throw the ship behind schedule. See how much we need. We need to lift the man of the month six. Yeah. So there we go. It's fine. Good. Attaching the propeller is a big job. All the action is at the stern tube at the end of the ship. First, the propeller shaft must be placed inside the stern tube. Then, the propeller must be attached to the shaft. Soren's crew has been in this shed since 4 a.m. cleaning the stern tube. Good morning. Any overlooked grit will damage the propeller shaft. It needs to be 100% clean. I also said to the guys, we need to have it so clean so I can eat ice cream at the stern tube. So it needs to be 100% clean. Good as usual. We did a good job, and uh, we're very satisfied. Soren gets the go-ahead from both inspectors. Perfect. Now he's got to get the next job right. One mistake, game over. Sea trials postponed. If we damage the part when we're doing this job, it's a terrible situation for the yard because we don't have any spare bearings and we don't have any spare shafts. Now the action's in the ship. Soren's crew prepares to slide the 105-ton propeller shaft through the stern tube and into the shed. The shaft will run all the way out here and all the way to this point. The shaft is running all the way out here. The shaft is 11 meters long but it goes into the stern tube one meter at a time. It's hooked up, slid forward, unhooked, the alignment checked, the last meter cleaned again each time, ten times in all. Two hours later, Soren can relax. The propeller shaft pokes through, undamaged. Now the pressure's off Christian Dirksen, the scheduling officer. It's another milestone for ship 210. We have past the point where the building of the ship is critical, so we can calm down a little now. Two days later, it's 5 a.m. Soren's crew is still cleaning that shaft, just to make sure. Today, they hang the propeller. This is the biggest propeller in the world. Made in Germany, it's nine and a half meters wide. It weighs 132 tons, and it's worth more than one million dollars. Many of my parts is uh, the, the biggest and the mo most expensive parts we have on the ship. So you've got to treat this propeller as well as you treat your wife? Yes, better. Attaching the lifting lugs and cables is a job in itself. Soren won't breathe easily until this lift is over. The propeller can't be damaged. It 
It's a complicated lift. The propeller must be gently turned upright 90 degrees. It goes without a hitch. The biggest problem this morning is a stubborn log. <laughs> Soon, Soren will face the big test. Attaching the propeller to the shaft. The world's largest propeller is in play. Now it must be attached to the world's biggest container ship without damaging either. There are no spares for this million dollar baby. And Soren won't rest easy until this job's done. Centimeter by centimeter, the prop is moved up the shaft. <laughs> There are just a few more centimeters to go. Men lad os stadig væk lidt mere luft i bunden. Du må godt give den noget mere. So it will be tightened by hand. Now we will uh, get a chain block hooked in that in that one in the bottom because uh, we have a little more uh, uh, space uh, in the bottom here. So we need to have a propeller like this moving this direction. Johannes, kan du give fire lidt mere på den talje? Ja, det er fint, jo. Er det godt? Stop! Det er meget fint, det der. Prøv lige øje med ringen, der ikke lige kommer ind i nogen sted. Bare læg den ned igen. Lad os prøve ringen over dig. Øj det. Once the world's biggest washer is in place, the world's biggest nut, all five and a half tons, is on its way. Threading this nut isn't easy. First the crane positions it, then they have to level it. They have to be absolutely sure. If not, they'll strip the threads. The next day, the prop is pulled the final few millimeters up the shaft, under extreme pressure. It's a nail biter. That's why the inspectors are here. One misstep could damage everything. But today, Soren hits a home run. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Next morning, Soren's crew has a new task. They were set to install this engine shaft. Then, their crane broke down. That, in turn, blocked the Goliath crane. Delays are costly, so there's a quick solution. The big crane shifts its load and comes up the other side of the ship. Just 40 more big blocks to go, 
and ship 210 will be assembled. Okay, now we're ready to go. Now that shaft segment can be lowered. It's a tricky two crane lift. The segment is longer than the opening it must go through. The hole is only 11 meters and the shaft is 2 meters longer, so it's, uh, you need to angle it like this one when we get it in. One crane raises its end of the shaft higher. Then both cranes lower together, carefully. These are one-of-a-kind pieces, too. This is just one segment of the world's longest engine shaft. Ten segments of finely machined steel will be linked together. 120 meters of shaft connecting the huge engine to the big propeller. Every week, this looks more like the world's biggest cargo ship. Soon, it will be crammed with containers of furniture and toys, TVs and digital cameras. No one will say exactly how many containers this giant ship will hold. It's a corporate secret, but guesses range up to 15,000. Containers will be lowered into these holds like this. So the tracks guiding this cage must be aligned properly. It's the exact width of a freight container. These inspectors are checking the tracks to make sure they're in spec. So that every container gets a smooth ride. Loading and unloading. later, Ship 210 is floating, but it's far from seaworthy. Thousands of details and finish-up jobs will keep the shipyard hopping in the few weeks left. Some systems can be tested now but not the world's longest engine shaft. It won't be fired up until the sea trials. That's when Soren starts working around the clock. In the beginning of the sea trial, we only get asleep when we uh, time for it. Many times it's only uh, we're getting two or three hours sleep and when we get, need to get up again if uh, something happens. Jörn Sorensen will take the big ship out to sea in five weeks. He's run more than 120 sea trials. But you never know what will happen on a shakedown cruise. <laughs> Today the focus is on giving a ship known only by a number a name before its maiden voyage. The red carpet is out. The captain and his crew are decked out in their best. And two busloads of VIPs pull up. But all eyes are on a black limo. The ship's godmother, Lady Bond of England, is here. It's a European tradition, appointing a godmother to look after a ship and give it a name. Lady Bond, I welcome you. The ship is ready and she's waiting for you. I name you Eugene Mask. May God bless you. May you sail the sea safely and be a happy ship for those who man you for your owners and for your country. The ribbon is cut and the ship's name revealed. Eugene, yes, 
Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. The sea trials are the next big step for the Oijin Mares. This bunch will be paying attention. They built this ship. These musicians are just a few of the 3,000 workers, the welders, pipe fitters, electricians who got the world's biggest container ship this far. Four weeks later, the Oisin Maersk is good to go. Today, it will be towed out to deep water for its shakedown cruise. It's a day to remember for those who worked on Ship 210. It put bread on the table, paid the mortgage, and bought the kids' clothes. But now, the Eugene Maersk will never return to Odense. It's one thing to look up at this ship. Looking down shows its true size. Big ships from the little shipyard always draw a crowd. Danes are a seagoing people, and they've seen ships off in style since the Vikings left Odense in longboats. only way to find out what works and what doesn't. The big ship will be sized up for five days in these sea trials. With millions of parts in play, gauges, pipes, valves, pumps, Something's bound to shake loose or fail. The first test is starting the engine. As it turns out, someone forgot to tighten a few nuts. Now the entire ship waits for four guys to finish the job. Twenty minutes later, the moment of truth. works. It's fabulous to see this yacht after so long time to see it moving. Soren will check out every detail along the full length of the world's longest engine shaft. We can see all the oil here is running into the bearings. That looks very nice. The oil is clean and everything is perfect. It's slippery inside the engine. It's dripping with oil. But how else do you check if any one part is out of whack and shaving, chiseling, or rubbing another? Some things just happen on sea trials. This smoke is just paint baking off exhaust pipes. And oil leaks are common. But occasionally, there are accidents. One of Soren's men is being evacuated to a hospital. He fell off this ladder last night. It's awful. That's the worst case we can have. A uh, something has happened with our guys, so that's really, that's hard. The 
weather's rougher now, and a critical test is next. The engine is winding up for a full speed run. 300,000 pieces of steel have been welded together to make this ship. And they're about to be stressed like never before. Okay, Ole, I will count down. We go hot, hot, three, two, one, now. A 15 centimeter steering wheel moves this big ship to the left, then to the right. Hot power in three, two, one, now. Those hard turns stress the hull of the world's biggest container ship. It wiggles like a snake. It can flex, twist up to nearly half a meter from bow to stern. Taking the Oisin Maersk out for a spin is all in a day's work for the unflappable sea trials director, Jürgen Sorensen. This shakedown cruise has been a rush. It is one of the best. Everything is running well, and, uh, but uh, I think all of us could, could be satisfied with the sea trial. Soren Jensen's had a good cruise. Everything's working out on the Eugene Maersk. It's very nice to see all the things we're working with, the main engine or the start and the propeller and the stern tube. All these things working perfect. Everybody is happy and very glad to uh, deliver yeah, a good ship to the owner. Now the world's biggest container ship is on its way. It took a year's hard work. But 3,000 Danish shipbuilders pulled it off. And until something bigger comes along, this freight train of the high seas is the mother of them all.